It's time for another blistering report from the front lines of the cultural war for a constitutional America. And now, here's your host, Charles Benninghoff. America's culture war has come flying back, front and center. Bill O'Reilly gets to feel right at home once again, and it's not even Christmas time yet. That's because the globalist cartels are doing everything in their considerable power to ensure that our First Amendment freedom of speech is a non-existent right. Plus, these socialist forces, which include Facebook and Google and other social media sites, all want to make sure that Americans never have access to conservative news sources, like me. <laughs> well, we're going to fight back on that one. That's because dedicated socialists like Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg blame Hillary Clinton's landslide loss on conservative news sources, and he is now calling those news sources fake news. In other words, conservative media outlets lied to the voters about Hillary Clinton's brain disorder and health problems. They lied to you about Hillary's pay-to-play scheme at the State Department. They lied to you about her efforts to start World War III or possibly even destroy a country like Libya or even hide her information from the public by using her own mail servers or her husband's going to Orgy Island at least 30 times. So these are lies that they want to stop us from spreading. Well, here's a clip from Tucker Carlson on Fox News describing these deliberate calls for censorship of conservatives online. In the past 24 hours, many on the left have stepped up demands that companies like Facebook, Google, and Twitter, the companies through which almost all of your news flows, censor so-called fake news. That is stories that some believe help Donald Trump defeat Hillary Clinton. Such politically counterproductive writings should not be allowed, they argue, a point that the Chinese authorities have been making for many years. And therefore, the voters who are gullible and stupid in the minds of media moguls like Mark Zuckerberg elected Donald Trump because of all the fake news that we created about Hillary. Tucker Carlson is absolutely correct. This type of censorship is straight out of communist China and Nazi Germany. If your access to information was restricted to dutiful and responsible socialist media sources like MSNBC, ABC, CBS, and CNN, then Hillary Clinton would surely have been elected. At least that's the narrative that Zuckerberg wants you to believe in. So Zuckerberg and his cabal of fellow lefties now plan to shut down conservative sites on the internet. We haven't seen any movement recently in Congress on our efforts to deregulate the internet. So in the meantime, why don't we plan to shove their own internet regulations right back down their throats and use it against them? I think that's a great idea. Listen up. If the socialists in power during the Obama regime want to treat the internet as a public utility, and that is exactly what the lefties did when the FCC, by regulation, declared that the internet is the same thing as a public utility, then we'll demand that Congress treat it as a public utility which means that Facebook needs to shut down and bust up under American antitrust laws, just like Ma Bell was busted up decades ago. Some people will try to argue that Facebook is a private company and therefore it can't censor anyone it wants to. Not according to the FCC, as Facebook has incredible market power and as a public utility has to treat everyone equally. After all, Ma Bell was also a private company. It was acting like Facebook is now, and the Attorney General's office at that time came in and broke it into separate companies. Broke it up. Engendered competition. Well, we want to break up Facebook because there's no competition to a company like that, unless somebody smarter than I am can figure out how to break up an internet site into regional areas. This was back in the old days, in the 80s, when there was only hard line telephone companies around. It was easy to geographically break up one big company and make it into competing uh, separate companies. That's a little difficult to do. So I think we ought to just shut down Facebook completely, shut it down and wipe it out. Why? Because they are indulging in censorship. So according to the platform rules that the socialists want us to play by, 
we have the right to go in and demand this to happen. Why? Because Facebook has almost a billion users who rely on it on a daily basis and the FCC claims the internet's a public utility. Therefore, Facebook has a duty to provide the same service to every single person. We didn't make these rules up, the socialists did, and we want to beat them over the head with these rules. The LA Times, US News, USA Today, and CNN have all published a list that they claim is full of fake news that lied to you to help get Donald Trump elected. Well, look at this. Here are some of the conservative news sources that have been labeled as fake news. Breitbart News and World Net Daily, two of the most diligently screened websites in the world. They report only the best news in the best way. They vet everything. Everything they print is the truth. CNN says, however, that they're fake. But it is CNN that's the fake news source. CNN was the one that was trading information with the uh, Clinton campaign, and we know that to be true. Also on the list, Project Veritas, which is James O'Keefe's undercover journalistic operation that exposed tons of voter fraud that fraud favoring Hillary Clinton this year. Alex Jones' websites, including Infowars and Prison Planet, are labeled as fake news. The Blaze, which is Glenn Beck's news website, is also on the list of fake news websites. Influential conservative blogging sites like Red State and Zero Hedge are on the list. Here is what Barack Obama said this weekend at the Asia Pacific Economic Conference, where a socialist media reporter asked him about the so-called fake news situation in the United States. If generally we've got uh, elections that aren't focused on issues uh, and are full of fake news and false information and uh, distractions, then the issue is not going to be what's happening from the outside. The issue is going to be uh, what are we doing to ourselves from the inside. Uh, the good news is that's something that we have control over. And I quote, that's something that we have control over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does. Well, he did. A few more days he won't. But you know, he can sure do a lot of harm in the next 60 days when he's still in the White House. As I have reported before in other videos, in 2015, Obama had the Democrats on the Federal Communications Commission vote to regulate the internet as a public utility. The FCC hitmen are not shutting down conservative websites yet, but they now have the power to do it. And with guys like multi-billionaire socialist political contributor Zuckerberg and other big wig government control freaks like him, pressure is mounting to censor all conservatives. And if Facebook is restricting your access to that information and you don't even know it, that amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? If conservatives can't reach their target audiences because of Facebook censorship, it amounts to exactly the same thing as under Joseph Goebbels, who was a Nazi propaganda chief. All he let out as news is what he wanted to let out as news. Nobody got the right to say anything else. And in fact, as it got on in the Nazi regime, if you said something else, you off you went to a concentration camp. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, was also in Peru at the same summit as Obama, and he let another drip, zinger drop. You know, he's willing to take things even further than Obama himself is. So listen to what Zuckerberg said. Or take keeping everyone safe. You know, we, we live in a relatively peaceful time, but there's still far too much violence. So we're building artificial intelligence that can uh, go out and scan and flag content that might lead to violence. All throughout the election season, we were told time and time again by the mainstream media that Donald Trump was inciting violence. You remember hearing that? Only the conservative news sites, which Obama and Facebook label as fake news, told you the truth about this. The liberal sites didn't tell you at all. It was, and it is, the socialists who are inciting violence, killing cops, Thank you, George Soros, for funding Black Lives Matter. The Hillary Clinton campaign paid operatives 
to incite the violence. And after the election, George Soros, MoveOn.org, and even Planned Parenthood have been funding riots and violence in the streets. Yeah, Planned Parenthood and Move On have been doing this with taxpayer money. <laughs> we pay Planned Parenthood as taxpayers, and they turn around and try to kill us on the streets. Again, we only know the truth about this because of conservative websites. Well, Zuckerberg of Facebook says he's developing artificial intelligence that will shut down any media sources that go against his narrative, his globalist worldview. And good luck trying to do business on Facebook if you're a conservative. You know, speaking from personal experience, if you try to attract conservative consumers on social media like Facebook, Facebook will sell your personal phone number to moveon.org or other socialist outfits, so you'll be flooded with spam calls 24 hours a day. That's what happened to me. I ran ads uh, for some uh, clients, put in my 800 number, and the calls started coming in. They're all phony calls, just trying to jam up my number. And the ads that you purchase on Facebook won't reach a conservative audience either. The ads will reach plenty of unhinged Democrats who will call you a racist, misogynistic, Islamophobe, but very few conservatives, even though that's what I paid Facebook to do, was to reach the conservatives. Instead, I reached the Democrats and the socialist crazies. <laughs> you should have heard some of the calls that I got. Well, I had to shut down the 800 number myself because it was being so horribly spanned by crooked Hillary's forces. If the globalists want to use the internet as a public utility, fine. We'll beat them at their own game. We need to call on Congress to break up Facebook as a public utility because the company is operating in bad faith and discriminating against customers such as myself and other conservatives. Public utilities have a legal obligation to provide equal services to every customer in their service area. Utilities also have a legal obligation to act in good faith towards their customers, which they certainly didn't do to me. They're not allowed to discriminate against customers, which they did to me. For example, imagine if your electric company announced that it was shutting off the power in Democrat neighborhoods, or that the water company is shutting off water in libertarian neighborhoods. Or how about if the garbage company announces it will no longer pick up the trash at your house if your lawn is festooned with political campaign signs of one sort or another. In other words, you just be political one way or the other. They shut down your garbage. They make you stink. <laughs> well, that's exactly what Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook are doing by limiting your access to conservative news sources. Antitrust laws were written by the federal government over a century ago to ensure that fair competition exists in the marketplace so as to protect consumers. And antitrust laws apply to public utilities. If the internet is a public utility, and the Democrats tell us it is, then Facebook is in violation of antitrust laws by restricting access to conservative news sources and only allowing it for uh, globalist socialist news sources. Going back, the Bell Telephone Company, that's what I called Ma Bell for its parent-like treatment of its customers, was broken up in the early 1980s under antitrust laws, and today we have a huge variety of public utility phone companies. The public has benefited greatly by the breakup of Ma Bell. Breaking up Facebook would do the same benefit for the society. As I said, it probably is going to be very, very difficult to do it geographically like they did when they broke up Ma Bell. Maybe what they can do is just form 10 public companies and say that uh, 100 million customers go to one, 100 million to another, 100 million to the third one, and so forth. But geographically, I don't think that they can do that anymore. So that's why we need to break up Facebook and it means that Congress needs to step in and direct the Justice Department to take action. That's where your help comes in. I'm glad you're there. Go to our action page today. Bob Mallory will have instructions for you on the next screen explaining how to get there. Send personalized letters to Congress demanding that Facebook be broken up for violation of antitrust laws and for acting in bad faith as a public utility. 
Obama and the globalists wanted to declare the internet as a public utility? No problem. We'll beat them at their own game. But only if enough of us put pressure on Congress right now. Whether you do it to support Donald Trump or a, for a free and open internet, doesn't matter the reason why you do it. Do it today. Facebook is spending billions of dollars on computer programs now to censor conservative news. We're asking you to donate just a small portion of your time and money to fight back and beat them. Beat them at their own game. Please do it now. This is Charles Benninghoff signing off and wishing you freedom, fulfillment, and God's many blessings. Tell Congress to bust up Facebook under U.S. antitrust laws for censoring your access to news sources. If you're on our action page on our website, use the form next to the video screen to select a program. If you're watching this on YouTube or, heaven forbid, Facebook, click the icon appearing now, if Facebook hasn't censored it, to find a link to our action page. Or, check the video's description to find the link. Speak out today.